If you've ever considered cave diving, would you take it a step further by diving in Antarctica, whose landmass is almost totally covered by ice? Most of you wouldn't dare it, but some are there that are quite daring and adventurous. One such human is Jill Heinerth, a woman whose bravery is rare, and she performed the first ice cave dive facing several dangerous challenges. Iceberg B-15 was the largest iceberg ever documented in terms of surface area. It was approximately 159 by 20 nautical miles in size, with a land area of 3,200 square nautical miles. This is comparable to the size of Jamaica or Qatar. Iceberg B-15 was given birth by Antarctica's Ross Ice Shelf in March 2000, splitting into tiny icebergs the greatest of which was labeled Iceberg B-15A. B-15A drifted off Ross Island and north into the Ross Sea in 2003, ultimately dividing up into multiple lesser icebergs in October 2005. In 2001, Jill Heiner embarked on an expedition of a lifetime, diving into the B-15 iceberg. This aspiration started quite early, and she had been inspired as a child by a TV series by Jacques Cousteau. In her fifth grade, she did a project on mysterious disappearances in the Bermuda Triangle. She attended York University, where she studied visual communications design, Bachelor of Fine Arts. She was not just curious about learning, she was practical-oriented. This made her run a small graphic design agency in Toronto. She also ran an evening class for scuba diving in Lake Huron's port of Tobermory. Jill relocated to the Cayman Islands for full-time diving after quitting her office job in 1991. She went there to improve her skills in underwater photography. She moved again to Florida in pursuit of cave diving. She was in Florida under the mentorship of Wes Skiles, a documentary filmmaker. She worked together with him at Karst Productions in High Springs, Florida. The first underwater cave 3D map was made by one of the teams Jill belongs to in 1998. She went beyond the underwater cave system that could be dived into by any woman. The documented Ice Island film, where they discovered wondrous life and magical vistas, was the work of a team involving Jill and Paul Heinert, her ex-husband. They saw how the iceberg was carved. Jill has always participated in various explorations of caves and underwater systems, among which are the Anculine Caves of Christmas Island in 2015. One work of hers that would forever stand out was that Jill bravely led the team that first dove the ice caves of Antarctica, which we will cover today. In 2001, Jill captained an adventure that involved Paul Heinerth and Wes Skiles. They all left for the B-15 iceberg in Antarctica. Jill said, People look into caves and they see nothing but darkness, terror, fear, and claustrophobia. I look into a cave and I want to know what's around the next corner. This is Jill's motivation for all the dangerous exploration she ventured into. For Jill, going into the icebergs of Antarctica is a project for her rather than a dread for her. She is always willing to go to new places where no one would dare to go. In preparation for their journey, they watched several satellite photos. National Geographic was taken aback when they learned that there were caves inside the icebergs. Jill said her heart raced at her first sight of the white pinnacle of ice. It was beautiful. It was sculptural. She said their first dive was a bit nervous for them, especially for Wes and Paul, who had never dove on ice before. It was the coldest they'd ever experienced. They selected an iceberg that they named Patience Camp, and they got their Zodiac boat into a small bay. Wes decided to go into the icy waters because he wanted to have a minute video of the iceberg to test the effectiveness of his new camera. However, water was running into Wes's suit. Jill warned him that waiting one minute more would be dangerous, and exactly that was what happened. He was incapacitated by the time one minute lapsed. They had to help him back into the boat and take him into the Braveheart. He was warmed up with a sleeping bag after putting him in a bunk. He had stayed too long in the water. 
They were all experienced cave divers, but Jill had a better sense of what they might face in the iceberg caves. Aside from the known dangers of cave diving, iceberg cave diving encounters several other dangers, such as cardiac arrest due to thermal shock or hypothermia due to the ice-cold water. Besides, the ice in the cave can get crushed and block your way out, resulting in getting trapped into the ice-cold cave. Jill, Paul, and Wes were conscious of the danger of their equipment being damaged and the dangers of diving into the ice. But they had no idea what kind of habitat they would encounter inside the iceberg caves. Their contact with the water felt like a bang from the pressure of the water, similar to experiencing a migraine. To beat the cold, they first had to inhale a few deep breaths extremely quickly. When they put their faces in the water, the first thing they noticed was a combination of mud and thawed fresh water mixed with salt water. This made it difficult to concentrate. There were several little bits of ice that they had to push past before carefully descending into this uncharted zone. They came across a deep vertical fissure fracture after entering the uncharted zone. Jill and Paul made their way down the crevasse as they plunged down, down into the darkness, till they crashed to the ground on the sea floor. It was roughly 130 feet deep, which was further than they had anticipated diving in Antarctica. They did not, however, abandon their exploration. When they reached the bottom, Jill noticed a path to her right. Then it hit her. She realized that they had found it. They encountered surroundings that had never been witnessed before. The ice surrounding them was blue and white and crystalline, like a robin's egg at times and a deep turquoise at others. But the sea floor was red, orange, and yellow, every warm color imaginable, and the contrast was breathtaking. Out of nowhere, there appeared some kind of isopods. They were approximately the size of a human hand and looked like a cross between a spider and a lobster. They began to shower down from gaps above Jill's head, crawling across the floor, knocking her camera, and falling on her shoulders. It was like something out of a horror film. As they dove deeper into the iceberg, they heard unusual cracking, bursts, and groans from the ice. It was beginning to shift, turn, and transform, and Jill recalled hearing a deep moaning sensation that she felt down to her toes at one point. However, all of their gear was in working order. They thought they'd had enough for the day and wanted to leave, but when they arrived at the entrance point, it had vanished. There were huge chunks of ice where they had accessed the cave, and the opening they had swum into had vanished. Several thoughts raced through their heads. Oh my god, every breath is currency, and I only have so many of those in my equipment. So every breath marches me either ever closer to success or ever closer to death. As they neared these massive chunks of ice, they looked for a way across and around them. Eventually, they found a new way out, bit by bit. They had come to a standstill now. They had to float in the water for almost 20 feet until they got to the top. This was done so that they might readjust their bodies to the pressure from the surface. Looking up from the 20-foot stop, they saw Wes and Matt, the first mate, waving at them. They were undoubtedly delighted to have seen them. They informed them that the iceberg calved and a large portion of the ice flaked off, closing the entrance and sending a huge wave that nearly capsized them in the zodiac. All they could do was wait to find out whether they were dead or alive. Did Jill and her team's near-death experience deter them from diving into another iceberg? No since they returned the next day with more knowledge than the day before, according to Jill. Everything appeared to be in order at the entryway. They swiftly descended to the bottom, entered, and began capturing some of the inhabitants. They gradually discovered that the pressure was increasing. It was growing in strength all the time. And then, all of the sudden, it was moving quickly. They couldn't kick hard enough to move forward because they were going towards the exit. They understood the current had trapped them. They exchanged glances and said, Oh boy, we're being sucked inside the iceberg. However, they noticed a blue light in the distance and hope was resurrected. There was another way out. Paul and Jill decided to follow the flow and exit through the new opening they discovered. While you're within an iceberg, you have no idea how far away that blue light of the entrance is. 
and as they began to race with the flow to this light, they started drifting, and it didn't look like it was getting any bigger. They moved for a long time until they came to this entrance. Jill raised her head to shatter the ice, assuming they were free, but there was ice everywhere around her. She never saw the boat since the ice was taller than she could see. She was terrified and she couldn't tell if it had been 15 minutes or half an hour, but she was becoming cold. She was trembling when she suddenly hurt something. The river had swept the boat away from its anchor, just as it had pushed them through an iceberg. Their boat shifted as the link was strung up onto it, and finally they were able to see it from their position. Hope was restored when they heard Wes's voice. Is that Jill? He sighted them in the distance and was able to cautiously move the Braveheart near them, pulling them out of the water. Despite their experiences, they decided to go on another dive, and this time Wes eventually joined them. He decided that the photographs they produced were so appealing that he wanted to shoot them himself, making use of the best camera they had. They entered the water, descended to the bottom of the sea, and worked their way through. Soon enough, the water pressure rapidly rose again. Jill turned to face Wes and Paul, signaling with her thumb that it was necessary to turn over and leave. Unfortunately, as they rotated, they realized they may not be able to escape. They couldn't move ahead, despite how hard they endeavored to pull and dive into the water floor. Jill was there in the lead, Paul was close behind, and Wes was losing momentum. Help me with the camera, he screamed. Jill wasn't having that, and she said, F the camera, we might die. She was enraged, but Paul stepped back to assist Wes, but she was upset with him since she believed that their lives were much more valuable than a camera. They succeeded in steering the camera to the entryway, but even then they had no idea how they were going to climb the crevasse because the water was streaming down it. It was so forceful that each moment they attempted to climb up, it pushed them back down. So Jill searched around for a potential escape from the very cold water. She finally remembered the tiny ice fish they'd been observing, which was roughly the size of her thumb. The fish resided in the ice in holes, she reasoned that the holes might be used as climbing supports. Thus, they stuck their fingers in and used them to move forward until they finally reached the surface, which was still 130 feet above their heads. Even though it was a long way up, it was their only option. They made their way back up, hole after hole, until they were free of the crevasse and the torrent. They had been two hours late when they arrived at the ferry. Afterward, they didn't give up and decided to take one more dive since they cherished the thrill of the adventure. So they prepared their gear, went to have a meal, and planned the dive. But while they were eating, the iceberg, which was the cave they had just been within, broke up into pieces and sank, sending massive waves towards their boat. The entire square mile of ice that they had been inside of was disintegrating into the water. Then they realized, if they had been into the water, they would have died in there. Mother Nature was kind to them, because that would have been their end. We would like to thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed watching, take a dive on the like and subscribe buttons and hit the bell icon, so you get notified when we come back with another exciting cave diving story.